always thought about writing a book, but you've delayed it for some reason. Well, my guest had a dream for many years, but unlike a lot of us, she followed through on that dream. And she is now author Jenny Egertson, and she's sharing wisdom from the stories of six women over 80 in her first book titled Before I Leave. Congratulations on this accomplishment. Thank you so much. So many of us talk about doing this, but this is really well written. It's beautifully uh, shared. I think your love of these women just shine through. Thank you. So good job. Thank you. Good job. Okay, so how did you get the idea of sharing from these eight women? Well, I never intended to write a book. I was 46 years old and I, mean, sorry, I was- Six women, right? Yeah, sorry yeah, about women. that. Yeah, okay. It's six women. You know, I was in Chicago picking up my daughter who had stayed with some friends for a couple of nights and they were celebrating the birthday of an 80 year old friend of theirs. Her name was Maude Kelly. And I just fell in love with Maude. When I met her and throughout the evening as we talked about different topics, I was just so taken by her point of view and also her poise and her sense of peace and everything about her that I just couldn't stand the thought of not having another conversation. So the next day I was driving back to Minneapolis. She lived in Ocean City, New Jersey. And I thought, how am I going to see this woman? Oh, I'll write about her. Oh, maybe I'll write a book about her and other women. And then, oh, I saw an image. It just went across my mind and it was before I leave and I thought I guess I'll be writing this book. <laughs> and you went back and you visited her so much so she at one point said uh, no we'll, we'll continue tomorrow. Yes. <laughs> I know I was kind of badgering her <laughs> with all my questions. Uh -huh. No but she was delightful. I visited her twice mm -hmm. and she just gave me all her time and and told me so much about her life and her views and her struggles and how she overcame them. I, you couldn't not fall in love with her so and as you as you as a writer as you mm -hmm. kind of thread through these things do you see similar wisdom that is passed down uh, i think there was one uh portion i think it is it's in the intro uh, they were talking about how you know some of the wisdom that was shared is like hey we all go through ups and downs and mm -hmm. some of us do it right and some mm -hmm. of us don't do it right but we all continue right and we all make it somehow yeah you know, their advice was, eh, it was, there were some things that were the same. A lot of it was different, but there were a couple of themes. And one of the things they all talked about was the importance of communication. You know, in, within their families, um, with their children in particular, you know, that's how they navigated their worlds. And some of them didn't learn it until later in life. You know, learning how to communicate and express themselves, learning how to listen. Um, so the advice about communication, the advice about children was pretty similar, I would say, and very touching to me. And I learned from them. I needed their advice at the time. Mm. I needed them as mentors and friends. But this didn't happen overnight. This has been a project that's been going on for a number of years. 15 years it went on. <laughs> and then I decided finally, uh, after I interviewed my mother, um, I decided, all right, that's enough. Now I'm actually going to do it. I still was putting it off, but a friend challenged me, sort of threw down the gauntlet, and I'm like, all right, I, I finally have to do this. So I did. Well, thank you to your friend that challenged you, and thank <laughs> you know. for completing it, you know, <laughs> at, at this point. Um, I think there's a lot of people who are in our age bracket, let's just say past the age of 50, mm -hmm. you know, we, we, we either have images of what we thought we were gonna do, and I know that you had always hoped but then there was then there was your friend that just said basically but even with her encouraging you to write mm -hmm. it there still had to be something in your mind that was just like all right I'm gonna finish this right a um, couple of things first of all I had made promises to the women even though many of them were gone by the time I finally got it done well they were all gone except for my mom I just wanted to keep that promise but their families I had made I had made promises to their families. They had entrusted me with their mothers and grandmothers. You know, they had given me their time. You know, I had interviewed many of them. I just felt like I owed it to them. And I owed it to myself because I said I would do it. And I always wanted to be a writer. And finally, I had something to say. And so, all right, 
they decided to do it. What was the hardest struggle? I mean, we, we now see that the, the peaks because obviously it's a completed uh, project and it's yeah. done, but what were the, some of the struggles? Well, time was a problem. You know, I was working full time and I went kind of, I went in and out of corporate jobs over that 15 year period. So, you know, when I was working full time, it was very tough to finish it. But I also, um, as it evolved, I wanted to incorporate what I was learning from these women and I wanted to incorporate my own voice and what what I was how I was evolving and I had gotten a lot of advice against that um, a lot of some writers and other friends had said it's gonna sound too self-indulgent and I was worried about that so I was really conflicted but I just had to do it right that was what felt right um, so that was probably and then finally I had not given myself permission to have my own voice I don't think mm -hmm. until I finally did it and I realized oh I was holding myself back. I, you know, I, again, this is just me. I didn't see an over projection at all of your your thoughts. You just, but the, for for me, it it was a constant. You know, this is what's driving on to the next page. Oh, let me follow this. Oh, that makes sense. How did you find your six women, other than your grandmother and your mother, obviously? Okay. Well, um, and Maud, whom I met, she was the impetus for the book. But the second woman, Sadie, was, let's see, a neighbor of mine uh, suggested that maybe his Lebanese friend would know somebody. And so I went to a party and met Tony, and he, he recommended Sadie. And we met, you know, and I fell in love with her then <laughs> and knew she was the right person. Um, my aunt, Phyllis, actually recommended that I talk to Ruth Yamamoto's daughter because she was Japanese-American. She thought she would have a powerful story, which she did. Uh, and then I pursued a name. I went to, I don't know if you remember Dr. Carol Johnson, mm -hmm. who was yes. superintendent of Minneapolis Public Schools. Mm -hmm. I went to her for a name. I had worked with her um, in a different capacity when I was at Target, actually. And um, she recommended Hallie, Dr. Mm -hmm. Hallie Hendriette Smith. And as soon as she described Hallie, I was like, yeah, that's the one I want. Mm -hmm. That's the one I want. So. Just people I knew, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And just kind of floated into your universe. Uh, what were the joys of completing your project? Well, getting it done. <laughs> Doing what I said I was going to do. Um, just knowing that I had, you know, completed my commitment to these women. Um, I also really, really want to set an example for what we can gain by, um, sharing by having relationships with people who are older than we are or just in a different generation because I gained so much and I needed them. Mm -hmm. I needed them as mentors. I needed them as friends. And so the joy that I have now is, wow, now I get to let other people know about that and encourage them to do that. Mm -hmm. So Your final chapter is with your mom. And so, and, and you call her Songbird. Uh, and But I, I found this interesting. You're going to read a little bit from that in, in a minute. But the thing that stood out uh, from that is you say, I just needed to give myself permission to actually finish what I had begun. Yeah. 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 That, and you mean, um, I did say that, and I did think that. And I think that my mom was the one who gave me that permission. And you know, a I didn't realize that until a friend of mine said, I, didn't, I had not intended to interview my mother, and a writer friend of mine said, you know, you are not going to be able to complete this book until you have the most authoritative voice in your life, until you interview the most authoritative voice in your life. And when I did that, it's almost like I wanted permission from my mom <laughs> mm -hmm. to finish it, you know, and, and and her approval, and I wanted to know what she thought about it, and I got that. I got that. Beautifully so. done. Beautifully done. And she was with you at your book launch. She was. She was at me. She was with me. She was sitting next to me, and I remember when I asked her about it, I said, "Mom, would you hold my hand?" And you know, in case I needed. And she took me quite literally. She walked onto the stage and <laughs> held her hand out. She was seated, and I was standing up, and we held hands for a little while. Um, because that's just the type of person she is. Yeah, it's so, so well done. Where can people find your book? Um, I am selling it on my website 
at www.jennyegertson.com. That's Jenny with an E-Y. So, um, and that's, for the time being, that's where I'll be sending it. I, I hope to have it in bookstores sometime soon after the first of the year.